Hello and welcome to everybody on Cloud Fitness. So in today's video, we are going to cover Python as a programming language and essentially from this particular video, I am going to create a series of videos on Python as a programming language. Essentially, we are going to, uh, you know, go through each and every detailed concept of Python, you know, be it your data types, be it the OOPS concept, everything. And as we learn the concepts, we are also going to implement it through our coding practices. So essentially, we are going to practice the code. How do we think and how do we, you know, execute the solution essentially. So all this we are going to learn in this whole process of Python as a programming language and essentially this is just an introductory video but even in this particular video I am going to explain you a lot of my new details a lot of concepts which you know even if you are appearing in an interview later on right you might be asked about a lot of these concepts which I am going to discuss even in this particular video so I'm going to keep it less theoretical but even if there is some theory associated to it I am going to link it to the code so without any further ado let's move ahead and see uh, you know, the very first question that might come to our mind is why do we need to learn Python? You know, we have SQL. Why do we need to learn Python? Right now, Python is a language which everybody should learn, uh, you know, irrespective of the domain you belong to. Be either you uh, like whether you are an analyst or you are a data engineer, right? You should be having the basic understanding of Python at least. And right now with the today's world data engineers, they don't they need more than the basic especially for the python why so basically essentially right now we are having you know the big data we are dealing with the big data 10 years back we we were not having you know that much of big data so even when a company was hiring a data engineer at that point we were not thinking of uh, you know that somebody has to deal with etl or elt process in python we were not thinking in that direction but right now since we have the big data right with the variety of the data we have you know the json format we have the xml format we have variety of data and to deal with that you cannot simply say okay I know SQL and things will be done no so you need a little enhanced a little mature language right which can actually solve uh, your problems in X number of data sets right so Python is a language which can do that part very effortlessly so that is just a one-liner statement why do we need to learn Python we are not going to think too much into that part right now essentially since we are learning Python why not Java why not Scala right why only Python at this particular moment right so we have few features few benefits associated to Python which I'm going to discuss right now which can also be considered as a data points on why we should learn Python first right because first of all you know understand it from a very broader perspective it is the most used language and uh, you know right now at least for the data engineers right also it is an open source language it is available online you know free of cost you can download it and in fact we are going to do that in my upcoming videos i'm going to show you how we can download install python and we can start working with python on our systems right it is an open source language and you can easily learn it on your own as well right similarly it is very human readable and easy to understand programming language so when i say human readable so if you look at this particular slide right the top part of it the top snippet is actually a code in python right i would not even say a code it is just two three statements uh, in python and the second snippet is the same code written in java so if you look at it right so the, you have fewer lines in python compared to that of java so now i'm not making it it as a java versus python video but i'm just uh, you know bringing out the points where python is really good at right so if you look at stuff right it is saying the line number one stuff equal to and it has some data right hello world hi there everyone you know six so that is just a random data that is that uh, you know that you have right and then the line number two says for i in stuff print i it's it what does it mean it is very human readable right so for for anything in or everything in stuff print i right for whatever is there inside stuff just print it 
right so it is very easy to understand and easy to read but when you look at the second code right it says public class test static void main so what exactly is this string argument right we kind of don't understand it very easily right so this is what human readable and easy to understand uh, feature of python is and then the third thing is object over oriented programming technique so when you talk about python everything is object oriented right you must have heard about this keyword oops right now oops is a very a very big concept which we are going to learn and implement uh, in our future video but here i'm just going to give you a one liner about object oriented programming technique so if you look at this particular snippet right now right i am saying x is equal to 1 on the right on the left hand side i'm saying x is equal to 1 and then i'm saying print x and then i'm saying print type of x so these are just three lines of code right essentially no logic nothing but i'm just simply saying x is equal to 1 so when i say that 1 is nothing but an object in python so python whatever you work on whatever code you develop right so you are actually working based on this object oriented programming technique where most of the uh, you know uh, code is around objects so you deal it as an object now this object oriented programming techniques comes with lot of other things classes object abstraction encapsulation then you have polymorphism inheritance but all these words we are going to learn all these uh, concepts we are going to learn later on so but for now just remember whatever you define in python is essentially an object now i'll go back to the slide it supports uh, point number four it supports dynamic data types now what is this dynamic data type right so if you look at the light left hand side uh, on the screen right now x is equal to one print x right i'm just saying x is one and print x so on the left uh, on the right hand side you can see it has printed x is nothing but x is one and then when i'm saying what is the type of x right it has said class int right so since it is numeric it is addable right you can add it right so those those kind of uh, uh, types are essentially called integer types because those are integers they can be added you can subtract it you can multiply it so i'm telling this for the people who do not know what exactly a data type is but essentially as we proceed you will know all of it now if you look at line number seven i'm saying the same the same uh, variable x i'm saying it is equal to cloud fitness now if you look one is an integer but cloud witness is, is not an integer it is a string so string is again a data type right and when i say print x and i say print type of x again so it says print x it has printed cloud fitness but type of x it is saying string right so essentially it has dynamically changed the data type over here also when i say x is equal to one i do not have to define that one is an integer or one is a string i'm not defining it anywhere i'm not writing it that one is integer right i'm not defining it so when it executes the statement when it executes the first three lines of code it automatically identifies that it is an integer and when i say x equal to cloud fitness in quotes it automatically identifies it is a string so that is nothing but it is called dynamic data typing which is a very good feature and it has a lot of benefits when we work on day to day basis in a programming language. Then the fifth point is optimized memory management. So it has an optimized memory management. Now all these things which I am telling you these might get asked in any interview right related to python or you know even when you are interviewing as a data engineer and you write python on your resume so these are the things these are the concepts which might get asked right so when we talk about memory management how it is being done in the python right now if i go back to an excel that i prepared so you can actually see in python what happens is your whole memory gets divided into two parts one is a stack memory one is a private heap space so there are if i say it, it is correct to say that the memory in python comprises of stack memory and the private heap a uh, private heap space memory right now what happens is whenever you define right x is equal to 9 y is equal to 9 z is equal to y minus 1 so you are defining three 
objects at the top right let's say whenever you're writing a program you have defined something what something you have defined x equal to 9 y equal to 9 z equal to or z or z whatever you might call it equal to y minus 1 so this is something that you have defined now what happens is in the private heap space automatically python stores the object everything is an object in python and what is the object x equal to 9 y equal to 9 z equal to y minus 1 so object is your 9 9 and then y minus 1 so this is nothing but the object right and this object gets stored in the private heap space and the reference right and the reference to it which is x y and z gets stored in the stack memory also what happens is this is done by python memory manager this is done by python memory manager then the other thing is when when i say x equal to 9 and y equal to 9 i have defined two objects right but what python does is internally python uh, memory manager does not create two objects over here it will create one object only because the value is same the value is 9 only for that object so it is not going to create two so two separate object it is going to create only one object and hence it is an optimal memory solution and then if you look at over here for the stack memory there are two pointers to this 9 x and y so if you see x and y both are pointing to 9 so this is how it actually stores your data and everything get referenced by an id so every object will have internal id which you do not have uh, you know any control over so essentially if it is an, if there is an object called as 9 it will have an object id associated to it right it can be anything here i have given randomly 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 it can be anything now similarly if you look at this x and the y over here right now this is pointing to an object id right internally it will have same object id now when you say z equal to y minus 1 it is an it is equal to 8 right so when i say 8 over here right now this 8 is nothing but it is a new object because the value is different and it will have a different object id so this object is being referred by z over here through the object id so this is how your space utilization and python memory management is done internally and whenever and whenever any object is not referred by any name right let's say 8 is no longer being used by uh, z now in that case there is something called as garbage collector here which automatically which automatically basically release that amount of memory which is not being used so this is all done by python memory manager and the garbage collector and that is why we also say that the python has you know very optimized memory management so this is called as memory management also i would also like to show you one more slide over here so if you look at this right x is equal to cloud fitness i have given that y is equal to cloud fitness right same thing x is equal to 9 y equal to 9 same kind of example but with a string right not with a number now if i say print id of y and print id of x now id is nothing but id is the storage location right id is the object id of that particular object now what is the object here cloud fitness is the object id is nothing but the id of this particular object right now if you look at id of y and id of x if you look at here this is same so this is how we can even visualize it programmatically so both the ids are same but now if i say x is 9 y is 9 and z is equals to y minus 1 same example which i gave you just now in the excel what and then i try to print the id of y x and z or z basically you can actually see that x and y are same 10742792 but if you like look at the object id of z it is 60 in the end so object id has changed so this is nothing but this is called as optimized memory management in python now what are the other things about python essentially it is very easy to integrate python with ai and ml right even when you talk about data science right r and python are the two languages which can easily talk right so even if you are a 
data engineer and if you want to upgrade to become a data scientist even then you will need python as the primary skill right even then you are going to need python as the primary skill now python is a very broad language now inside it you know there if you need to do any kind of transformations right so you have a you have a set of library to do transformations now if you want to go to the data science part right there's a library for statistics for example right then you kind of need to work on that particular part so so python is huge in itself but in our series we are going to cover you know almost all concepts of data uh, data engineering as well as we will try to cover data science uh, you know methods and the libraries as well but first we will focus on the data engineering part and then we will move on to the data any libraries any modules that link to the statistics your you know data science libraries as well now uh, of course uh, point number 7 if you look at it is no separate compilation needed so when i say compilation needed what exactly do compilation mean so compilation is nothing but it is a program in itself okay python itself has a program that essentially uh, for example you are writing a language right you are writing python but when computer needs to read it right it will read it in you know a computable uh, in computer exe executable format right so that is nothing but uh, that is called compilation but when you talk about python right you do not need any separate compilation when you run the code each line is executed compiled and executed at the run time only so that essentially is very helpful in case of python because uh, it reduces lot of uh, you know execution time as well because whenever you have a compiler right in that case what happens is your compiler does two types of checks compiler will do lexical checks and syntactical checks okay it is going to check whether your whether you have uh, properly formatted your code or not right that kind of check will actually be done by the compiler so that check will actually take time but in case of python what happens is since there is no compilation done so there is so there is no compilation done prior to running the code uh, what happens is you know your execution time reduces and python is able to do that very effectively so this was a very short introductory but i feel i have given you know a lot of content in this particular video itself there is a lot there are a lot of concepts in this particular video especially related to your dynamic data types and your memory management right so i hope you like this particular video and do support me so that i go ahead and create you know lot more videos especially on this python so thank you so much for being till here and do remember to like share and subscribe to my channel